Hey everyone, we're here today with Greg Pallast, New York Times best-selling author and journalist uh, whose investigative reports appear on the BBC and elsewhere. Uh, today we're mostly going to be talking about super PACs. You might have heard about those in the news a little bit. Uh, Greg, thanks for being on the show today. Hey David. Uh, if you could just explain to us what exactly is a super PAC. A super PAC is a, uh, is a political predatory instrument. <laughs> Technically what it is it's a somewhat uncontrolled um, political bucket that has effectively uh, the ability to spend, take unlimited donations and spend unlimited amounts of money. Technically, while they tend to be associated with a candidate, like Romney's, the backing, one backing Romney's called Restore Our Future, um, Technically, the candidate cannot coordinate with the super PAC. They're supposedly independent of each other, which is, you know, one of the bigger jokes in Washington. Uh, the one thing that makes super PACs quite uh, different than any other type of donation we've had is that you can also have hidden donors. Some of these PACs have donations from P companies that are simply the numbers of P.O. boxes. So if I wanted to find out who's behind one of Romney's super PACs, I wouldn't be able to do that as a as an American citizen. I wouldn't be able to get, figure out exactly who's financing it. Not a chance. If they don't want you to know, you don't know. This is brand new in American politics. This was never allowed before. We've had PACs before, political action committees. PAC stands for political action committee. Mm -hmm. Political action committees used to be like bundler, kind of bundle mechanisms. So, for example, Exxon and Enron had PACs, but every individual donor, anyone who put money in the pack, had to say who they were, give their address, had a limitation on how much it was, say that they worked for Enron, and by the way, they had to be U.S. citizens. The Supreme Court's recent ruling in uh, Citizens United, as it's called, ironically it's called Citizens United because the one thing they did, people have been concentrating on something very, very weird that, in my opinion, almost small, that corporations can give massive amounts of money. They've already given massive amounts of money. The problem is now that we have billionaires who can personally give literally hundreds of billions, millions of dollars, and you don't have to be an American citizen anymore. You just have to be a U.S. Incor uh, incorporated organization. So, you know, Al-Qaeda LLC, if they spend 20 bucks in a corporate in Delaware, can donate to our campaigns, the Zeta drug gang, uh, Medellin cartel, um, you know, you Man the Manson family. Uh, Charles Manson from prison... Uh, cannot vote, and he cannot donate money. But if he if he incorporates himself, um, he can give several million dollars to the candidate of his choice. Do you think there's Saudi Arabian or Chinese money influencing this election? I don't think so. I'm quite certain of it. You're quite certain of it. First of all, what is Citibank? Citibank's number one owner is um, Sheikh Talal. 9% owned by the, the overwhelmingly, the controlling owner is... Uh, a Saudi Arabian. Wow. So when Citibank, as a from its treasury, which was never allowed before, from its treasury donates, is that a donation from Citibank, which is already creepy enough, or is this uh, just a way for the Saudi royal family to uh, take care of their boys? 